One is to restore his bail, and the other one is an alternative application. If you won't restore his bail, then transfer him to home detention. These two applications were geared towards providing the environment for him to get a fair trial. Unfortunately, the court was not in sync with us. But it's very, very important to stress this point, that what got us this far, what led to all these problems, is the refusal of the court to obey or implement, for want of a better word, to implement the ruling of the Supreme Court that Mazin Nam the Colonel that will never jump bail that he was driven into exile by the actions of the prosecution and therefore the ruling by the court that a joint bail shouldn't have been made. So in ordinarily we expected that this court would have just followed suit by restoring his bail but it didn't happen. So now the court has, that's not what the same court said. So we are going to look at that, we are going to go home as a legal team and ruminate over this and come out with a legal response to, to this anomaly. The court made some order that he felt is in our favor, but really it is not in our favor. He made modifications in the conditions of his detention at the DSS. If you recall, they used to take documents from us. They used to listen in because they bogged the place and everything. She made an order that the room should be changed and all that. But I think this is pyaric and that we should take note. This is pyaric. It's not enough to guarantee that Mazen Namdekano will get a fair trial. So in the next few weeks or days or whatever, before the next adjourned date, you will hear from the Lego team as to our next course of action. My other colleagues would like to say a few words as well. Thank you. Well, um, thank you very much. Well, today we need him. Section 2, 3F of Terrorism Prohibition and Prevention Act says I cannot be tried in Nigeria. That's the law of Nigeria. I can never be tried in any court of law in Nigeria. That's what the law says. Anybody standing in trial or coming to try me is a terrorist. That's what their law says. As simple as that. Section 2, subsection 3F of Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act. That's what it says. Any court considered to try me is committed an act of terrorism. Yes. Very clear. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then come to try that very person is not done anywhere in the world. So, so you must be aware of that. So that is why there is all these ridiculous delays. That is what Supreme Court said. I did not jump bail. My home was invaded. They came to kill me and I survived. They came to Kenya to kidnap me, brought me back to this country, and seeking to try me, which the law says cannot happen. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then hope to stand on that illegality to conduct a trial is not done anywhere in the world. And what happened in my case? Nobody had, no, there's no exception. No exception whatsoever. That's what the law says. Section 12 of the Constitution, what does it say? Any treaty ratified by Nigeria becomes law. It's law. You cannot change it. It doesn't matter what they do. All these shenanigans is just pure rubbish. You never stand. Not with me. I believe in justice and fairness. That's all. Nigeria is signed to a standard, not to a condition. And that is the lawyers. Yes, that's all. 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 Now is the time for Nigeria to begin to bind the wounds of the nation. So I am therefore using this opportunity to appeal to our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, GCFR, to, you know, to address some certain mistakes and missteps of the past and begin to redirect our nation to part of national reconciliation.
And one way our president can do this is to look anew at the case of Mazen and the Colonel and immediately consider the prospects of political solution to his situation. If the president does this, our president would have put his hands in the arc of history and begin to bend that arc towards the hope for a better Nigeria that is anchored on justice, equity, fairness, peace, security, and economic stability. So long as this matter drags on, the wounds of division will continue to last. And that is not what this country needs now. What we need now, more than anything else, is peace now, what, and unity. What, sorry, what is your call to the federal government? What I'm asking the president to and do is to consider the prospects of political solution to the situation. That is by way of out of court solution to this problem. This is a political matter that ought to have been dealt politically by exploring political solutions. That is our call to the, to the president and in a, in a, by extension, the federal government of Nigeria. Okay, so yeah, name. No, no, no. My name is Captain Bish Johnson, U.S. Army retired. Which uh, ordinary, the ordinary person on the street might think that uh, a favor had been done to us, but it's still the same thing. It's just the other side of the coin that was tossed. Uh, we are still going to remain in the in, in the in the premises and facilities of the DSS. You know, this issue of bugging, this issue of bugging is a very critical and technical thing. And uh, we know that the, the Nigerian DSS is about the most sophisticated secret police in the whole of Africa. And they have a lot of equipment. The walls inside the bricks, inside the bricks of their building has chips, microphones, cameras inside the walls of their building. So there is no how uh, the court has made it uh, that they should give us a clean room. Who determines the cleanness of the room? Who determines uh, the positions of the box? So the thing, provided they're still inside the DSS premises, it's still there. Those box will always be there. These things have been built uh, long, long before now. You know, and these are these are structures and uh, box that have been planted many, many years. They can't break the walls of the houses of their rooms to remove those box. Now, now let me tell us something. Recently, they moved us to the to the office of the assistant director that they call that they call adults. Now. In that place, it's, a, it's somebody's office, all manner of equipment. There are so many things. So how do you even determine that the place does not have a bug? A room filled with property, chairs, television, gadgets, mic, uh, cameras. How do you determine what and what is functioning and what is not functioning? So it's like, it's like uh, giving us a banana with one hand and then collecting it with the other hand. Selling so buying there is nothing new, nothing has changed. Provided you are in the premises of the of the state security service of Nigeria, nothing has changed. A place where you can say it's not bugged is the Nigerian prison. You can be sure that in the Nigerian prison, nothing is bugged. And now, the witnesses that they are going to bring are those who are working in the DSS. So those witnesses will sit in the other room and listen to our questioning and answer session with our clients. Then at the end of the day, when you now bring the, the, the witness to court, they already know what we are going to ask. They already know the answers to everything. So, there, we want, you see, justice should not only be done, but should be seen to be done. Now, if you took us to, to the Nigerian prison, we believe that the Nigerian prison does not have special interest in this matter, as the DSS has. The DSS has 101% interest. Now, the, the, if you take us to the, to the, to the prison, the prison people know that their function is to keep this man. They don't have, they are not coming to testify, they are not coming to do anything. But the DSS want to win. They want to win. They want to win this case. They are the ones, in connivance with the national intelligence agencies, they are the ones who travel to Kenya to rendition the camera. So they, are, they, are, they, they, they don't want to be found uh, to have failed. So they will do anything possible, including legal and illegal, to make sure that they win this case by all means. When I say by all means, I mean read my lips.
by all means. It doesn't mean it doesn't have to be legal. It could be legal and extra legal. So the DSS, says, we don't trust you. That is just it. We don't trust you. Thank you.